a storied college basketball program with coaches and players and staff that have transcended decades. Harry Litweck, John Chaney, Fran Dunphy, Mark Macon, to name a few. A silly city, excuse me, built on blue-collar mindset and can be described by two words. Temple Tough. A tradition as old as cheese whiz on a cheesesteak, Jake. Temple Owls basketball in March. It's March. It's madness. It's a battle between two teams named Owls for a chance to go to the AAC Conference Championship game. It's the Temple Owls and the Florida Atlantic Owls on WHIP Radio Streaming live on YouTube. It's a battle of the Owls, but it's a duo of Jakes that have the call. Jacob Smedley along with Jake Gable. Jake, the Owls are in uncharted territory. They're looking for their first appearance in a conference championship game in over 10 years as a member of the American Athletic Conference and looking for their first ticket to March Madness with two straight wins. They haven't gotten there in five years. How are the Owls continuing to win these games? You mentioned the Temple Tough. It's been their Temple Tough defense that's gotten them here so far. The highest anyone has scored on them is 61 in the past three games. It's been 61, it's been 60, it's been 54. Temple has been able to do it on the defensive end, but they play a FAU team that can put the ball in the hoop, and when I say that, I mean it. 83 points per game in the regular season. Temple's defense going to have its toughest task yet. And you mentioned the toughest task yet. A few of the best scores, not in the conference, but in the entire NCAA. John L. Davis averaging a little over 18 points per game. That's fourth best in the conference. And Big Vlad Golden isn't too shabby himself. 15 points. And Jake standing at an imposing 7 foot 1. Yeah, John L. Davis, the co-player of the year, along with Chris Youngblood, who we just saw get knocked out in the semifinal game before USF is gone UAB in the finals to take on the winner of this game Davis what a shooter his percentages 49% from the field 43% from three-point 85% from free throw he is deadly from literally everywhere on the court have to watch him at all times then golden all seven foot one of them the Owls are gonna try to contain tonight but it comes off of a a game where Sam Hoffman did a fantastic job against a 6'11 Deshaun Jackson, 260 pounds. Sam Hoffman at just 6'5, tasked with guarding the center. He did it. He held Jackson to just nine points, but Golden is a whole different beast. He had 21 points in FAU's wins yesterday against North Texas. And on the flip side, for the Temple Owls, Jake, their, their offense, we mentioned it, uh, they've won in many different ways so far in three games so far. Took down UTSA 64-61, then beat SMU by 15, shooting 50% from the floor and scoring 75 points. Last night, only scored 18 points in the first half, 19% from the field, but were able to come back and beat Charlotte at their own defensive game. What are they going to have to do in this game against FAU? As you mentioned, the best scoring offense in the conference. Temple's going to have to adapt again, but they've been able to do so so far. It's not like it's asking a lot out of this team. They score high against SMU. They play the grind it out game you just mentioned against USF and they played their own style of basketball against UTSA. They have to adapt again because the 58 points that they scored against Charlotte last night, the 18 points, the lowest number of first half points in the entire season for the Owls. They were able to bounce back in the second half, but if they have that type of first half against FAU today, then they will not be advancing to the final in the AAC. They need to be the offensive explosive version of the Temple Owls tonight to keep up with FAU's offense. 
And we've seen so far in these games, Jake, the leadership for the Owls. Heisier Miller, he had a technical yesterday in the game against Charlotte, but stayed composed, finished the game strong. Talking about the leaders, and Adam Fisher has continually talked about the togetherness of this team. Steve Settle, Sam Hoffman as well, after the game last night, really talking about that togetherness and group intensity that they're bringing to every part of this tournament. It shows. I mean, everyone was so important in the SMU win and in the Charlotte win, offensively and defensively. I mean, their leading scorer was 14 points from Steve Settle. You had 11 from Riley. You had 11 from Miller. You had multiple guys that were filling not really filling up the stat sheet, but we're doing their part. And then defensively, everyone has been doing it so far. I mentioned Sam Hoffman earlier, his great defense against Charlotte, against much bigger players. Steve Settle earlier in the tournament, five blocks in a game. Isaiah Miller's even been doing it. The smallest guy on the court for Temple. He had six seals, a tying a AAC tournament record in a game with that. And he has nine steals in the past three games. That also ties a tournament record for most steals in a tournament in AAC conference play. I mean, everyone has been doing it, but they need everyone to do it again. And you're looking at the matchup. John L. Davis, the co-player of the year in this conference, and Vlad Golden, of course, who matches up. We have our suspicions against Golden. Davis, I mean, you can argue Jaleel White, who I didn't even mention yet, might be their best defender on the wings, but he comes off the bench. How many minutes is he going to get? You'll have to see Jordan Riley probably going to pick up that matchup first. Yeah, we'll see. As starters announced here on the floor at Dickey's Arena here at Fort Worth, Texas, getting some fist bumps from Hooter on the way over to the cheerleading squad. Starters for both sides. We mention him all intro here. John L. Davis at the guard spot for FAU, along with Jalen Gaffney, Elijah Martin, Brandon Witherspoon, who had 16 points on the bench in the reg off the bench in the regular season, 80 to 68 win for Florida. Atlantic over the Owls and Vlad the defensive impaler Golden in the middle for the Florida Atlantic Owls and for the Temple Owls the same five you heard have heard the past three days. I see a Miller along with Jordan Wiley, Matteo Piccarelli on the floor with Sa Steve Settle and Sam Hoffman. The FAU Owls no stranger to postseason basketball. They went to the final four last year as a number nine seed in the NCAA tournament looking to return and get some revenge. They beat Memphis who's in the conference. They beat a number 16 seed FDU, Tennessee and Kansas State before falling to San Diego State by one point, Jake, in the final four. They definitely have the experience in this one. They definitely do, but who's trying to break people's brackets this time? Temple <laughs> is the underdog this time. FAU now the ones with the target on their back. Temple in their road. Cherry uniforms with white lettering across the center. FAU in white uniforms with pink and blue trimming with owls in blue across the center. Settle tips it to Piccarelli and we're underway in the ACE AC semifinals. Owls moving right to left. Miller at the top of the key guarded by Gaffney. Miller to Settle. Settle back to High Sierra Miller. Miller. Miller to Hoffman on the left wing for three. No, it rolls in and out. Rebound goes to Brandon Weatherspoon, who quickly moves it into the front court. And off to Gaffney on the right wing. Weatherspoon gets a screen from Golden. Weatherspoon, interesting matchup here. Hoffman on Golden. Lost it is Gaffney. Miller looking for another steal. Trying to get it on the ground and corralled by Martin, who's trapped in the corner. And Martin, a foul there on Hoffman. The Owls again, defensive intensity starting out early. I love the intensity, but don't love the foul. It's not coming on a shot. It's coming from behind the three-point arc as well. Just dribbling, reaching in. Hoffman, you're guarding a seven-foot-one golden. You're going to have to keep those fouls down because you're 
probably going to have to use him against Vlad. Witherspoon off the inbound. Witherspoon drives on Miller. Left hand floater is up and good off glass. Brandon Witherspoon gets the game's first points. Puts FAU up two. Well, I mentioned Vlad earlier, and he was sealing off Hoffman, so he wasn't able to rotate and help inside to contest the layup. You got to stay in front of your man if Hoffman's not going to be able to walk away from Golden. Riley, the handoff from Hoffman. Three from Riley from the left wing. He's got it. Jordan Riley knocks down the three, and the Temple Owls lead the Florida Atlantic Owls three to two. Pass to the corner by Riley. is Martin. Martin off the screen. Elijah Martin, the 13-point-per-game scorer. Loses the handle temporarily, gives it to Weatherspoon. Weatherspoon drives, pass inside to Golden. Golden, the left hook shot is in and out. No rebound goes to Riley. Riley moving right to left the other way, and they'll slow it down on the left wing. Riley to Miller. Miller off of a screen from Hoffman. Miller back to Hoffman. He passes it to Settle on the right wing. 18 on the shot clock. Nearly two minutes. It's gone already in the game. Hoffman to Riley. Riley on the right wing. Riley, Gaffney on him. Pull up mid-range. Jay from Riley. No. And rebound goes to Golden. And Seto picks his pocket with the steal. Piccarelli draws the fake. And he knocks down the three. Matteo Piccarelli from the left wing. And the Temple Owls up six to two. Temple has been desperately needing some production out of Piccarelli. They've been able to manage without it so far. But Piccarelli coming up big on that shot. Gaffney to Weatherspoon, trying to get it to Martin. Settle the hounding defense. Pass to Weatherspoon, step back, no three. Gives it to Martin, draws the jump. Weatherspoon dips inside. Pass to the corner, three for Gaffney on the far corner is good. And he matches the three with one of his own, Jalen Gaffney, who averages just a little over five points per game. That wasn't just good ball movement by FAU. That was a leap ball movement. Every Everyone knew where everyone else on the court was. If they jumped in the air, they knew exactly where to throw it, finding the open man in the corner. Hoffman at the top of the key, 15 on the shot clock, three minutes gone in the game, 17 left in the first half. Temple leads FAU 6-5. to five. Riley draws the jump from Gordon, floater up, no good, rebound by John L. Davis. Davis left to right across the timeline. Davis on Miller, shake and bake, drives inside, floater no, Riley Riley tips it away and he grabs the rebound. Jordan Riley the other way. Pass ahead to Piccarelli, gives it back. Riley, no. Battle for the rebound and it's corralled by Davis. Excuse me, that's Martin. Martin to Gaffney. Gaffney for three, no. Battle for the rebound and Piccarelli with the box out. Matteo Piccarelli only played in 13 minutes against Charlotte. No points with a big rebound there. Yeah, Piccarelli providing good minutes so far. I know it's early, but you need them right now if your Temple's still up one. Miller drives inside, fronted nicely by Martin. Settle, settle, thinking three, passes it inside to Hoffman. Five seconds on the low block against Golden. Turn around, jumper, no, and he missed everything. Rebound goes to Martin. Martin, the skip pass, and it's stolen by Wiley. Owls have been forcing a lot of turnovers over the past few days. They force another one there. Yeah, I mean, that's just a poor decision there by FAU to just try to pass the ball up when there's no one there. Riley just taking advantage. Right spot, right right time. Miller, the screen from Hoffman. Settle on the right wing. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Both teams set to make early substitutions. Pass to Miller. Miller a deep three with four on the shot clock and he missed everything. Not a very good shot there from High Seer Miller and that will take us to our first timeout. Both teams start to get into a little drought offensively. Temple leads it 6-5 to five with 15-20 left to go in the first half.
Welcome back to Dickey's Arena here in Fort Worth, Texas. Jacob Smedley along with Jake Gable, the Temple Owls lead. The Florida Atlantic Owls, 6-5. to five. Jake, what have you seen so far from both Owls? Well, I've seen an aggressive Temple team so far offensively. While it hasn't resulted in many made shots, only six points. Riley has taken four of them. He got off to a really slow start, zero points in last night's win against Charlotte. He did make up for it in the second half, scoring all 11 of his points in that second half. But he's shooting early. You like the aggression, just needs to be a little bit more efficient. And then Piccarelli has the other three. Temple, I like the shots they're taking so far. Just got to make a couple more. And the defense on FAU for Temple, I think they've done a good job of limiting any quality looks. Substitutions for both sides at the timeout. Nick Boyd in for Florida Atlantic number two. John Carlo Rosado along with Brennan Lorien as Florida Atlantic moves left to right for the Owls. Julia White, Shane Dizzoni, and Zion Stanford into the game. Davis has it on the left wing, hounded by Julia White. Greenlee, Gr Greenlee, step back, three, no, pass off to Boyd. Boyd to Davis. Davis, the pull-up. Jay, it's blocked by White. Shot Leo White with a block. And Jordan Riley going the other way. Well, Riley. Mention, might have that matchup against Davis. It's White. White instantly into the game. Instantly a huge impact. Stanford drives. Stanford gets the jump. Stanford's layup. No. Rebound goes to John L. Davis. Up ahead quickly to Boyd. Boyd spins back to Zoni on the guard. Shane to Zoni. Hit some big shots so far in this tournament. Now it's Greenlee. Greenlee off of a screen from Rosado. Davis. Davis trying to get it to Rosado. Rosado spins on Miller. Rosado draws the jump and lays it up and in. And Florida Atlantic leads as we're on the seesaw. 7-6. FAU in front. Rosado, great move there. But it was really similar to Zion Stanford's move. The only difference is that Rosado finishes his. Zion got the hard part done. He just missed the open layup earlier. Miller off of a screen from White. Dezoni on the left wing as a matchup on Rosado. Dezoni spins. Dezoni has it blocked aside by Rosado out of bounds. The junior forward from West Palm Beach, Florida with the denial. The Owls have seven on the shot clock as Elijah Martin coming back in for Davis. Well, I mean, FAU hasn't lost any interior presence going with Rosado checking in for Golden. He's done a great job on both ends of the floor in the last two possessions. Only one foul on either, either side so far. That was on Temple a few minutes ago. 13-49 remaining in the first half. Baseline inbound for Miller. Miller gives it out to White. Seven on the shot clock. White's got to get busy. Inside. No. Fight for the rebound on the ground. Coming up with it is Lorient. And he gives it up ahead to Boyd. FAU controlling pace out of the timeout. Lorient up top. And he's fouled by Stanford trying to contest. But Lorient was was ahead of the play and nearly finished the alley-oop. Stanford shrugging, asking why the foul happened. The problem is on the alley-oop, his left hand that blocked the ball away, that was completely clean, but his right arm chicken wings a little on the jumping player, and you just can't hit someone when they're in the air. So that will be a foul, regardless if the block necessarily was clean. Brennan Lorien in his 30th game of the season at the charity stripe. Knocks down the first to make it an 8-6 game. Lorien, the sophomore forward from Ocala, Florida. Temple has missed 0 of their last 7, 1 of their last 9. They haven't scored in over 4 minutes. And Lorient knocks down the free throw. A 7-0 run for FAU as they lead it 9-6. Greenlee was not letting Heiser Miller catch the inbound pass. Zion Stanford taking it up instead. Stanford across the timeline. Counted defense from Martin. 
Temple cannot afford to continue a slow start, as you mentioned, Jake, earlier against this FAU team. White at the top of the key, under 10 seconds on the shot clock. Crossover, drives inside, White lost it. White's got to put it up. He draws a foul. You can count it in the foul. Charlie White, barbecue chicken inside, gets two and a foul. White also aggressive so far. I talked about Jordan Riley being aggressive, getting shots up to start this game. Well, White, he's gotten two up. He missed the first, but he gets that one to go inside. Not afraid to use his body on that one. Drawing contact and obviously hitting it. Here, the free throw as well. White struggled with the free throws yesterday. He knocks down the free throw to complete the three-point play, nine to nine, as the Owls face in some pressure. Quante Berry into the game for the first time. In for High Seer Miller. Greenlee to Martin, guarded by Riley. Screen from Rosado. Martin across to Loriette. Oriente to Rosado, posting up Riley on the left block. He's taking his matchup. Rosado inside, doubled. He's got to get rid of it. Passes to Boyd. Boyd drives. Tough floater off glass is good. That is Nick Boyd. Puts FAU back up two. Yeah, I mean, FAU has a lot of guys that can score. Boyd, a nine and a half points per game scorer. He's not even in the top three of the team because that's how good of an offensive team this this FAU Owls team is. White taking Rosado off the dribble, draws the tight defense. No battle for the rebound, and it's saved in by Martin. Quickly pass up ahead to Greenlee. Greenlee left hand dribble into the paint, pass way out, and it goes right in front of us. Out of bounds, trying to find Loriant. Just the third, the third turnover for either side, the third all for FAU. Well, you like the defense there from the Owls on the transition. FAU got sped up a little bit. You got to think that Dusty May, the head coach of Florida Atlantic, wasn't happy with that decision to throw it away to no player. But Temple also some sloppy possession on the other end on offense. Jaleel White, you can't be fading away on the shot that he was taking just too close to the rim to be fading. Barry denied at the rim by Golden, who's back into the game for FAU. Martin to Greenlee. Greenlee backs out, kicks it to Lorien in the corner. Wide open for three, no, and Dezoni a rebound. Settle and Sam Hoffman back into the game for the Owls as Adam Fisher barking out orders under 12 minutes left to go in the first half. 11 to nine, FAU leads it. 17 on the shot clock. Barry on the right wing. Screen comes from Hoffman. Barry to Stanford. Stanford looking for a pass. He gets it to Dezoni. Dezoni on the left wing. Screen from Hoffman. Dezoni looking for any space he can. Four seconds on the shot clock. Barry gets the jump fake and misses everything out of bounds. And the Owls, just like last night, struggling to get anything going from the field. I mean, the good news for the Owls is that they're taking more shots than Florida Atlantic. They have 15 compared to nine, so they're only down two points. It feels a lot more than a two-point game right now, Jacob, though. It feels like Florida Atlantic is in control right now, but if you're Temple, you gotta look at the scoreboard and feel good about yourself despite being just one of your last 11 from the field. Time out on the floor with 11.23 left to go in the first half. FAU leads Temple 11-9 in the AAC semifinals. You're listening to Postseason Temple Men's Basketball on WHIP Radio, streaming live on YouTube.
Welcome back to Dickie's Arena here in Fort Worth, Texas. Just want to thank you for listening all week long to myself, Jake, Max Dinenberg as well for coverage of Temple Lau's women's and men's basketball. The women fell short in the semifinals game against another Owls team, the Rice Owls. The men looking to avenge that and get to the finals here in the men's semifinals against the FAU Owls. FAU leads it 11 to nine. Some substitutions. Brandon Weatherspoon back into the game for FAU along with Gaffney who works it across the midway line left to right. Golden holds it on. Passes it to Boyd. Boyd gets a screen. Golden wide open. Left hand hook shot over Piccarelli and just too strong. Vlad Golden puts FAU up 13 to nine. I mean, there's nothing Piccarelli can do about that. I mean, the wingspan and the height, that's a foot difference, probably. It's just, you can't let Golden inside if you can't put a bigger body on him. On the floor for the Owls, Miller, Settle, Hoffman, Piccarelli, and Zion Stanford. Miller on the right wing, gives it to Hoffman at the top of the key for three. No, rebound to Martin. Another missed shot for the Owls. They haven't scored in two minutes. Martin drives downhill. Martin, no, off glass. Rebound to Hoffman, who gives it to Settle, who will slow it down. The outs have to get going offensively. Miller at the top of the key. Hoffman. Hoffman drives. Hoffman finds a cutting. Stanford lost it baseline. Dribbles inside. Stanford puts it up. No. Rebound goes to Martin. Another miss for the Temple Owls. Boyd has it. Boyd mixing up Miller and passes it to Gaffney. Gaffney to Golden. Golden. Hoffman comes with the double. Three Owls there. And and Golden goes inside and nearly dunks it over three Temple players and four straight points for Golden. The Owls haven't scored in nearly three minutes. He's so tall. How tall is he that on the dunk he missed it on the front rim but kept it in his hand and then just laid it in instead. A turnover for Temple. Witherspoon in transition and throws it down with the left hand and FAU extends their lead. They're up eight. Miller, Hoffman, Settle at the top of the key. Back to Miller for three over Golden. No. Stanford couldn't grab the rebound. Boyd the other way. And the oil's dripping now for Temple. Three for Martin on the left wing. No. And Golden is fouled by Hoffman trying to box him out. Yeah, Hoffman, I was watching that the entire time. They were extremely physical. I was expecting a foul to get called against Hoffman earlier in the possession because he has kept shoving and shoving. I mean, he has to when Vlad's getting that much of a height advantage on him, but just a little bit too much there from Hoffman trying his best as he comes out and the 6'11", Emmanuel Akpomo checks in for the first time. Akpomo coming in and Piccarelli check checks out as well. Jaleel White back into the game. FAU shooting 50% from the floor. Both teams shooting around the same from three, but just 17% from the floor for the Owls. Davis inside, tipped away from White temporarily. Gaffney over Lee. Boyd, excuse me, 10 seconds on the shot clock. Dips inside, Gaffney in the corner, and he stepped out of bounds on the drive. Another turnover for FAU, and while Temple is down, they've only turned it over once. I mean, that's the only reason why they're in this game right now. When it's 50% shooting compared to 16%, is because Temple's gotten more possessions. But they need to start taking advantage of it. They've gotten the more possessions, but they haven't used them to their advantage. Nine minutes left in the first half. Miller right to left across the timeline. Gets a screen from Mark Pomo. Step back mid-range. Jay, no. Battle for the rebound. And it's once again corralled by Greenlee. Greenlee to Davis on the right wing. Quickly up ahead. Posting down Miller. Davis. And a foul on Heisier Miller. Do not count the shot made from Davis. 16% shooting for the Owls. Jake, don't know if they can win another game shooting that poor in the first half. I mean, that might have been the very first point I made in the pregame <laughs> that Temple started off slow. They were able to do that against a defensive-minded team like Charlotte yesterday, but you can't do that against the best scoring offense in the conference in FAU and arguably one of the best offenses in the entire country. 
Greenlee off the inbound. Greenlee into the paint. Kick out. Gaffney in the corner. 14 on the shot clock. Gaffney almost stepped out of bounds. White with the hounding defense. Gaffney off the screen. Pull up mid-range. Jay is pure. Another shot made. That's Jalen Gaffney, the senior from Columbus, New Jersey. And FAU's lead balloons to 10. It's 19 to 9. Really need a make here if you're Temple. Even if it's just two free throws, just get some points on the board and then seeing the ball go through the rim can help the confidence. Settle tries to pass it to Riley and he turns it over. And right now, Temple has absolutely no answer to FAU as Quante Berry set to check in for High Seer Miller as Adam Fisher and this coaching staff trying to find some lineup to put points on the board. Dezoni comes in for Rock Pomo. On the floor for the Owls, Quante Berry, Jordan Riley, Shane Dezoni, John Leo White, and Steve settle for FAU. John L. Davis on the floor with Brian Greenlee, Jalen Gaffney, Brennan Laurient, and Rosado. Greenlee, a little 2-3 zone now for the Owls. Gaffney, Gaffney at the top of the key. Gives it off to Davis. Davis against Settle. Drives in baseline. Draws a crowd. Pass to Gaffney. Greenlee open on the left wing. Gaffney drives into the paint. Gaffney left hand layup off glass is good. Jalen Gaffney's got seven points. And FAU pushing the pace. They're up by 11, 21 to 9. Gotta get something if you're Temple. I mean... You try, you're switching it up on defense, you gotta try to switch it up on offense, and that's what the substitutions Fisher making right now with DeZoni and Barry checking in as there's a foul called against FAU. Jaleo Light getting reached in on. Foul on the floor. We're going to keep it here for you with 7.24 remaining in the first half. Jake, the shots are just not falling. But they're not all bad shots. Some of them are wide open shots that the Owls, Temple that is, has to knock down. Well, Stanford, I'm looking at two of his shots. Both of them right at the rim. I won't say they're the easiest shots to make, but when you're here, the semifinals of the conference tournament, they, you have to make them. They're good, they're good enough looks, and that's really the case. Good enough. You're not going to get perfect looks against FAU. They made the final four last year. You can't expect wide open threes. You can't expect wide open trips to the rack. You have to make what you can get, and so far they haven't been able to do that. They need to try to switch things up. I'd even like to see Matteo Piccarelli come back into the game. He's struggled the entire conference tournament so far, but he made a he had a pump fake and a three earlier. I mean, he's, there's been three owls, excuse me, temple owls that have scored so far. White, Riley, and Piccarelli. He's one of them. So you have to try to switch things up. I know Barry and Dezoni just checked in. Maybe get some spark out of them. But what's happening currently on offense cannot be the case for the rest of the game or by the scoreboard right now, 21 to 9. You won't be in this game for much longer. And I'm talking even just in the first half. Yeah, it, Jake, I mean, the Owls, to, to a, to kind of a positive for those listening, the Owls did trail at the halftime against F SMU two games ago by one before coming back. And last night, again, we talked about the 18 points in the first half. They trailed Charlotte 22 to 18. But like you mentioned, Jake, right now, FAU is, is holding no prisoners, and they're going to continue to score regardless of if Temple makes shots. I mean, FAU licking their chops right now with the score right now. 12-0 run over the last five minutes and 20 seconds. Temple hasn't scored in nearly six minutes. I mean, it's... It just can't happen right now. If your Temple got to switch things up, you got punched in the mouth, it's all right. You can recover, but you need to find a way to punch them right back and see who can hit harder when it comes to the end. 
Shake a little rocky idiom there. Got to bounce back. Rocky rising above El Drago and the FAU Owls here. FAU leads it 21 to 9 on the floor for Temple out of the timeout. Charlie White on the floor with Shane Dezoni, Steve Settle, Jordan Wiley, and Quante Berry for FAU. Jalen Gaffney, who leads all scorers with seven, nearly all of Temple's total so far, on the floor with Lorient, Greenlee, Rosado, and John. Donnell Davis. Officials talking over, I think, Dusty May just kind of <laughs> in the way of the official right there. Nothing harmful there as they get ready to play again. 7.24 remaining in the first half. Dezoni to Barry. Dezoni gets it right back on the touch. Dezoni drives. Dezoni is fouled, and that's what you got to do. Jake had mentioned it early. Just free throws to slow the game down and get back to your pace. A great take by Dezoni. Yeah, and Dezoni was doing that last game. I mean, he didn't have the best game offensively. He had five points, but he was at least trying to get the offense going, and he was being a great ball handler as well as he gets to the line here. Dezoni knocks down the free throws. Free throws with a bugaboo for Temple last night. They Ooh, barely the escaped. <laughs> In Charlotte, they only shot 57% from the line, and Dezoni splits a pair. Cannot have those struggles again. 21 to 10, FAU leads it. Davis to Gaffney. Gaffney at the logo, directing the offense. Gaffney, little 2-3 zone again for Temple. Davis, Davis gives it to Rosado. Rosado trying to hand it off to someone, gives it to Greenlee. Two owls win the same spot. Seven on the shot clock. Greenlee's got to get busy. Greenlee drives, open is Gaffney. Gaffney, this one missed everything. Rebound to White, here's another chance for the owls to crack into the deficit. White. White drives. White, no off glass. Rebound to Greenlee. Another shot on multiple defenders. Greenlee backs out and passes it over to Gaffney. Gaffney right in front of us here at the scores table. Rosado. Rosado on Dezoni. Passes it to Davis. Davis, three on the way from Greenlee. No. Great box out by Barry of Lorient. House have to take advantage of these misses. Dezoni on the right wing, trying to feed it to White, and he's fouled by Greenlee. Another foul on Greenlee. That's his second, the fifth foul for FAU, and set to check in back in is Nick Boyd and Elijah Martin. Jake haven't really said John L. Davis's name a lot. 0 for 2 so far. He has two rebounds, but a foul. Owls are doing a good job of limiting him, but Jalen Gaffney is picking up where he left off. Well, every game, the Owls have done a great job of containing the other team's leading score when it comes to this conference tournament. They're doing it again, but the problem is FAU has so many scoring threats that even if you take him out of the game, they have other guys that can just fill in. DeZoni off the dribble, loses it. Davis the rebound. FAU quickly the other way. And then Rosado loses it. Owls going right back the other way. Under six minutes left. Barry the pass and White the layup as the Owls cut the lead back down to single digits. It's 21 to 12. I'm loving the minutes that White is giving Temple right now. He's been in the right place the right time. He's taken some shots that he hasn't made, but they've been good ideas and good shots. And he's giving great defense as well. Three on the way from Davis. No rebound to White. White. The 2-3 zone is working for Temple. FAU has missed their last three shots. Golden set to check in for FAU. Settle, settle, settle. Spins around Boyd on the baseline. Steve Settle has taken his matchup so far. Barry, Barry pull up three on the right wing. No, rims out. White corrals it on the baseline. Jaleel White inside off glasses in. Jake Jaleel White gets two to go. And a timeout call by Temple. White, the junior, making his imprint felt in the semifinal game. I mean, White might be the only reason why this is currently a game right now. It's been a 5-0 run for Temple over the past couple of minutes since that last time out about two and a half minutes ago. Almost all of it coming from White. He's got seven points, three of six from the field, and made one free throw as well. The only free throw that he took. He's been playing fantastic on both sides of the ball. 
And the 2-3 defense, perhaps it's working. We'll see if they stick with it. Yeah, 30-second timeout for Temple as they quickly break the huddle. Jaleel White, seven points, three rebounds, three of six from the field as he's getting some coaching from Cameron Winter in his first year as the assistant under Adam Fisher. Winter playing under Fisher at Penn State last season. The Dittany Lions making the tournament under Adam Fisher and Temple. Fisher looking to get Temple back to that spot with two wins. Here against FAU and what would be UAB looming for each side. Boyd off the inbound. Back into the game is Weatherspoon and Golden for FAU. Pass to Weatherspoon on the right wing. Settle on the guard. Weatherspoon high pass to Golden and a foul from White. A good foul though to prevent Golden from getting too far in deep. I mean, White... He's got the defensive capabilities to handle Golden, but I'm not sure if I like him on the matchup just because he's such a good defender of the guards as well as he gets, excuse me, he doesn't get checked out of the game, but Emmanuel Akpomo checks in and he switches on to Golden. Fisher heard you, Jake. Akpomo comes in for Golden. Davis off the inbound. Martin inside to Golden. 7-1 on 6-11. Golden is fouled. You can count it. And the foul. Bucket and the harm for Vlad Golden on Akpomo. Sixth point for Golden. And he'll go to the line for one more. I mean, I don't know what you do about that, Jacob. It's a reason why he was on the all-conference second team, averaging 15 points per game, 66% from the field. He is so talented once he gets inside of that semicircle under the rim. It's so hard to stop him, and Temple struggling with it so far. Golden completes the three-point play. Give him seven points, one rebound, a turnover. High Seer Miller back into the game for Quante Berry. Steve Settle also checked in in between the free throw and the bucket. FAU back up 10, 24 to 14. Under five minutes left to go in the first half. Miller at the logo. Miller gets a screen from Octomo. Miller has some space switched on to Golden. Riley. Riley in the corner over to Dezoni. Dezoni. Screen, Dezoni, pull up, three at the top of the key, no, in and out. It went halfway down and out, and FAU quickly the other way. Boyd dishes it off, inside to Golden. Golden against Akpomo again. Golden, great defense from Akpomo. Golden spins around and still gets the bucket to go over top. I mean... Akpomo played really good defense. The only thing he could do better is literally block the shot. He, he's doing well against Golden. It's just he's having his way. Miller, a much-needed three. He cans it to make it a nine-point game. 26 to 17. That one off the side of the rim. A high pass trying to get it to Golden again. He hit his hand on the top of the backboard. Al's looking to take advantage. Wiley in the corner for three. He's got it. Jordan Wiley off the extra pass from Settle. It's a six-point game. 26 to 20. FAU in front. 3.30 remaining in the first half. A 6-0 swing for Temple. A 6-0 swing in 17 seconds. What a quick swing that is. Temple with the momentum now. There's Weatherspoon at the top of the key. Dezoni on the guard screen for Davis. Davis trying to get it over to the corner for Boyd. It was tipped out by Wiley. And that is going to take us to another timeout. Final 340 in the first half on the other side. FAU leads Temple 26 to 20 in the AAC semifinals matchup. Don't go anywhere. You're listening to postseason men's basketball on WHIP Radio. Streaming live on YouTube.
Welcome back to Dickey's Arena here in Fort Worth, Texas. The two Jacobs, Jacob Smedley, Jake Gable here on the call. The FAU Owls lead the Temple Owls 26 to 20 with 316 remaining in the first half. Jake, the Owls starting to find their rhythm offensively right before the timeout. Yeah. 6-0 run in just 17 seconds. Heiser Miller hits a key three. It was 26 to 14 after Vlad Golden goes at Emmanuel Acomo twice and wins that battle both times. Miller hits the three to make it a nine-point game. And then a quick turnover from FAU. Vlad Golden hitting his finger on the rim, trying to get the high pass, but it was too high. And then instantly on the other side, Jordan Riley. Skying up for the three and hitting it. A quick 6 0 run went from a 12 point lead for FAU to a much more manageable six point deficit for Temple. And now they're looking like they can make this even a tie ball game, maybe even take the lead heading into half. Yeah, and right now, Jake, even while FAU sh shooting nearly double the Owls so far, Temple out shooting FAU from the three point arc. Four of 10, 40%, only one of seven for Florida Atlantic, and also six turnovers for FAU. The Owls only three, and they didn't turn it over really that all in the first few minutes of this one. On the floor for FAU, Weatherspoon on the floor with Boyd, Golden, Gaffney, and Martin. A baseline out of bounds for the Owls. Dezoni, Miller, Akpomo, Settle, and Wiley. Golden, Gaffney off the inbound. Pass to Golden. Golden shot is up over top of Dezoni. Again, a shot that just so hard to defend if you're Temple. I mean, it's such a high touch he has. He does it as the top of his wingspan. No one's up high enough to get up there, even with that Pomo out there. I see a Miller. The step back three does not fall. Boyd the rebound up ahead to Martin. Martin getting a screen from Golden. Step back three from Elijah Martin. No. And Dezoni pulls down the rebound. Owls going the other way. 2.40 left to go. Dezoni step back. Gives it to Riley. Riley on Boyd. Boyd slow... Uh, Riley slows it down and gives it to Miller. Miller gets a screen from Akpomo. Miller to Zoni. Zoni drives on Golden and lays it up and in baseline. Shane Dezoni has three points off the bench. Another good drive by Dezoni. He got fouled on the last one and made one of two free throws. This time wide open on that as he gets the steal as well. Dezoni, the steal of Weatherspoon. He's going to back it out. He saw Golden right there. Oh, and an offensive man. foul on Dezoni as Weatherspoon forces the turnover as Dizzoni trying to get away from Settle and finds an opening. I don't know if you can hear it, but the entire Temple Band shouting for flop. And yesterday, North Texas, the close, one of the closest teams to here in Fort Worth Dickey's Arena, the entire, uh, the entire fan base was asking for flops yesterday. And a fan <laughs> on Twitter was asking for FAU to go down, saying it stood for Flop a lot University. I think it's Flop Artist. Oh, Jake Flop, flop Artist. artist. My bad. My bad. <laughs> Weatherspoon on the right elbow off the pass from Rosario. Looking for options to pass. He gets it out to Gaffney. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Under two in the first half. Boyd sidestep. Drives inside. St tough left-handed floater. No. Akpomo throws it right to Martin. A foul. They're going to wave it off. And Temple will have it as Akpomo took a seat on the floor. Well, that whistle change whether or not Akpomo's play <laughs> was a disaster or game saving because he threw it right to FAU. The golden rule do not save it under your own basket because if the other team catches it they're right there at the rim to get it but Akpomo was pushed and fouled forcing his pass so it was the right thing to do I guess in the end. Laurie Ent checks in for Rosa uh, Rosario and Fisher rewarding our problem by taking him to the bench <laughs> as, Settle, as Stanford comes in for him. 1.30 left to go in the first half. Temple looking to cut into the six-point FAU lead. Wiley drives. Wiley lost it. Great strip there for Martin. Lorient the other way, and he's going to slow it down. Lorient lost it, and a foul on Wiley, who oh, cannot got, believe it. He's got to be careful. 
I mean, he threw his fist in the air, really upset with that foul call. I understand the stakes and the frustration. I think everyone does, and I don't think he's going to get a technical here, but you saw it last game, Heiser Miller getting double taxed with Nick Graves, and you saw it last game, USF and UAB, some key technicals there, making that game either much closer or much farther away, depending on the side. Can't let emotions get the best of you, even with all that's at stake. FAU in the bonus, eight fouls for Temple, a one and one coming for Brennan Lorient. Lorient makes the first, he'll get a second and put FAU up seven, 29 to 22. Lorient, two for t three for three at the line so far, looking to make it four. John L. Davis back into the game for FAU, and it rolls out for Loy, and he splits a pair. Riley, the rebound, and gives it to Miller. Temple has a little over a minute left to cut into the deficit. Miller to settle. Back to Miller, 18 on the shot clock. I see a Miller, step back three, gets a jump, passes it to Dezoni. Minute left in the first half. 10 seconds on the shot clock. Dezoni drive. Dezoni has it swatted away. Davis tips it ahead. John L. Davis ahead of the pack, and he throws it down with two hands. And Adam Fisher is yelling at the officials as we got a timeout with 49 seconds left. No, oh no, he is yelling at, at Stanford. Stanford. He's saying, get the ball. Man, I have never seen Coach Fisher get that upset. I mean, it's the emotions, it's the moment, I'm sure. But yeah, I have to assume that that's Stanford being in the same area as John L. Davis, who ended up with the easy fast break points. You gotta fight for that ball. Lay on the ground. The Owls have been doing, excuse me, the Temple Owls have been doing that the entire tournament long, but not doing it there. It's leading to two points. And in a game where you're already trailing against a team where you feel like shooting 27%, you don't know how long you can keep stay in this game if you're not shooting better than this. You really need every possession, every, every touch of the ball you can. And unsurprisingly, Zion Stanford getting put on the bench. Fisher still talking to him. Matteo Piccarelli coming in for him. Piccarelli again in for Stanford. Yeah, like you mentioned, Jake, haven't seen Adam Fisher like that in a long time this season, if at all. It's Temple, it really, they've won with the effort as well. Outworking teams, and right now it's also not showing as the shots aren't falling. Miller right to left across the timeline. 45 seconds and counting in the first half. FAU leads it by nine, 31 to 22. Miller at the logo. Miller drives, gets a screen from Settle, lost it, and it will remain with FAU. Elijah Martin, a great defensive poke away. I mean, you have 11 on the shot clock. You can really play your normal offense here. Don't have to rush too much. A make here would do you wonders to give you some life heading into the half. Miller, the sideline out of bounds, gets it to Dezoni. 10 seconds on the shot clock. Under 30 in the first half. Dezoni to Riley. Riley splits some defenders, drives in, gets the bucket, and the foul and a fist bump to the chest. A big bucket there, and potentially a momentum swing to end the half. What did I just say? You saw the Temple bench over on the opposite side of the court. All of them looking lifeless and defeated. All of a sudden, Jordan Riley gets the and one, and now they're pumped up and ready to go. I mean, 23 seconds left, and Zion Stanford apparently get, did enough to get out of the doghouse over there. <laughs> is back into the game, probably in a defense for offense sub. As Golden set to check in as well for FAU. Stanford and Barry in for Miller and Piccarelli. 31 to 24. FAU leads it. Golden checks in for Lorien. And now Emmanuel Pomo in for Settle to match up with Golden. I, I, I love the <laughs> chess game right there. FAU waiting for Temple to put their sub in. They do. And then, oh, Golden's going <laughs> in and then trying to get Temple off guard. Oh, no, we see Golden out there. 
Hawks. Time for Akpomo. Riley makes the free throw. It's now a six-point game, 31 to 25. Davis ahead to Boyd. Boyd up ahead to Martin. Martin had a wide open three, chose not to take it and take it out Surprising. for the final shot. Surprising you didn't take that. 10 seconds in the first half. FAU holding for a final shot. Pass, it's tipped by Stanford, and maybe that's a play that will also get you out of the doghouse. Zion Stanford tips it out of bounds. Five seconds left in the first half. There is an open FAU player in that corner if he didn't tip that pass, so great play there defensively from Stanford. Bowden gets it into Davis. Dezoni on him. Davis drives. Davis inside is blocked, but a foul on Riley, who cannot believe it and Fisher walk into the scores table hand on his face in disbelief I want to see who they call the foul I, I know it looked like Riley I, I want to see official word because I think I, no it was on Riley the block was clean I wonder if the body got him I was thinking Emmanuel Akpomo's body might have got him as well but Davis at the line John L. Davis, just two points in the first half. Make it three as he knocks down the first free throw at the line in his first attempt. Well, Lakai Patterson, Charlotte's leading scorer, was held to four points last game at half, but then he exploded for 13 in the second half. Davis makes the second. It is now a eight-point game. 33-25. Riley, a final heave. It goes off the side of the backboard, and that will do it for the half. FAU leading Temple. Owls have 15 minutes left to save their season. They trail the FAU Owls 33-25. to 25. 15 minutes till the start of the second half. Don't go anywhere. You're listening to Temple Owls men's basketball postseason on WHIP Radio, streaming live on YouTube.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Dickie's Arena here in Fort Worth, Texas. Just about done uh, with halftime here between the Temple Owls and the FAU Owls. Jake, the Fort Atlantic Owls leading Temple 33 to 25. The Owls have trailed the last two games at the half. Last night by four, tonight by eight. What do the Owls have to do to come back and win a Another game from behind to go to the AAC final. I mean, you start to see it at the end of the first half there. I really liked the minutes that Jaleel White was giving you. Uh, Jordan Riley as well towards the beginning and the end. The middle was a little bit murky there for Temple. But you, you need to stay aggressive driving. And I think that's kind of what those guys are giving you two of the most athletic guys on the team doing so defensively though i mean we we thought we talked about it so much vlad golden 11 points already five of six shooting it, almost every time he touches the ball it's going into the basket that's how good he's been you've tried hoffman on him you've tried Octomo on him i mean you got to switch it up. They went with a 2-3 zone for a little bit. Maybe you throw that back out there. Maybe you just double it every time that Golden touches it. You got to try something different because it's not working defensively. Starters on the floor to start the second half for both sides. Weatherspoon, Gaff, Gaffney, Golden, along with Martin and Davis for FAU for the uh, for the Tempo Lows. I see her Miller, Matteo Piccarelli, Sam Hoffman, Steve Settle and Jordan Wiley. Weatherspoon inbounds to Gaffrey. FAU now moving right to left. Witherspoon on the left wing. Passes to Gaffney. Gaffney on the baseline. Gets a screen from Golden. Gaffney trying to get it to Golden. He does. Golden the right hook shot over Hoffman who a good five inches shorter than him. Can't do anything on the contest. 35-25 FAU leads it. Five inches make it seven. 7-1. <laughs> seven, Miller Trying to get the offense going for the Owls. Gives it to Hoffman. Hoffman back to Miller. Hoffman giving him a screen. Miller for three. He's got it. I see a Miller knocks down the three and makes it a seven-point game. 35-28. Gaffney across the timeline right to left. FAU in their home white uniforms with Owls in blue. Weatherspoon for three, and he answers with a three at the top of the key to push it back to ten. Yeah, I mean, that's that's what FAU does. It is a great three-point shooting team. They haven't been so tonight, that being just their second three of the game. You got to make sure they don't start to get hot because they can in a hurry. Hoffman to Miller on the left wing. Miller off of another screen from Hoffman, and he knocks down another three, six straight points from High Sierra Miller. Again, a seven-point game. Martin. Martin off of a screen from Golden. Gaffney lobs it into Golden who slips behind the Owls defense. Four quick points out of the half of Vlad Golden. He has 15 to lead all scores. It's 40 to 31. FAU in front. Riley at the top of the key. Screen from Hoffman. Hoffman for three at the top of the key. He's got it. The Owls three for three from beyond the arc. It's a six point game. Gaffney. Gaffney on the left wing. Owls three for three from behind the the arc to start the second half. Weatherspoon, Gaffney, Gaffney, trying to pass it to Martin. He throws it out of bounds. And now Temple has it down just six. Wow, Temple, I mean, they've been shooting the lights out so far to start the second half. Miller with two, Hoffman with one. Hoffman, if you're giving up that size defensively, you gotta make four up for it on the offensive end, and he hits another clutch three. Temple's been a great second half team. They need to keep it going. Miller a screen from Hoffman. Gets the switch on Golden. Hoffman back to Miller. 12 seconds on the shot clock. Miller, eight seconds. Gets a slip screen from Piccarelli. Miller, step back three in the face of Weatherspoon. No, Golden corrals the rebound right in front of us. Gives it to Weatherspoon. Davis has it over to Brandon Weatherspoon. Weatherspoon drives. Golden inside and the right hand rim rocker for Vlad Golden, unaccounted for. He has 17 points. He's missed only one shot. You can make all the threes that 
you want if you're a temple, but Vlad Golden has been unstoppable. You gotta find a way. Riley hands it off to Miller on the right wing. Settle at the top of the key. Els have to have an answer defensively. Settle, step back, mid-range, J no, and Golden corrals the rebound, his third. Gaffney quickly right to left. Gaffney to Davis. Davis the pull up three. In and out. Rebound goes to Miller. John L. Davis continues to struggle. Miller to Piccarelli. Piccarelli sidestep three right in front of us. He's got it and a foul. He got hit in the face by Golden who's putting his hand out saying he did. He really didn't mean to do it. Just a 7-1 wingspan from Golden connected with Piccarelli. A huge shot and a potential and one. Piccarelli hit a clutch three in the beginning of the first half and now hitting the clutch three in the beginning of this second half. Oh, they're even going to review the foul because it, you have to in college basketball if you get hit in the face on a foul, you have to review the shot. Um, I, I, I doubt anything comes out of it because you, you even mentioned yourself, Jacob, that it wasn't intentional. I think he was just trying to close out and, you know, Unfortunate. We had a really good angle <laughs> right of it, in front considering of us. Considering it's right in front of us on the court side, but you know you got to see what comes out of it. Piccarelli at least getting one free throw though on the and one. I mean Temple, the three point shooting's been ridiculous to start. Four of five, and they're shooting eighty percent in just less than four minutes into this half. It's just that. FAU's been do, done doing everything inside as well, so it's really just kept them even, and they need to find a way to catch up. And Jake, we've mentioned it last night, the Owls getting in transition there. Miller seeing Piccarelli, a long pass, set him up, created space between him and Weatherspoon, and really forced Golden, as Weatherspoon lost his man, to come up and get the foul. The referees across from us, across the court, still reviewing it. Regardless, Piccarelli will get a shot at the line with the foul. Looks to be, again, reviewing it for... Foul, and they're going to call the foul. It's just a common foul. No technical foul being assessed at the moment. As they're explaining it to Adam Fisher here. When, no, maybe not. Maybe it is a technical. As the Owls are walking back to half court as Piccarelli is set for the free throw. Yeah, they're gonna, Two free they're throws awarded. Flagrant. Wow. And Matteo Piccarelli knocks down the first, one of the Owls' best free throw shooters on the team. And Piccarelli makes it a five point play and Temple will have the basketball down just three. A five point play and Temple can make it an eight point possession. Wow, I mean, that's... It's just what the doctor would order if you're Temple. What a play from Piccarelli to make it and then also make his free throws as well. Temple struggled with that. Now take advantage, Hoffman. Hoffman for three. Riley rips down the rebound, puts it up off glass, and he makes it a one-point game, a seven-point possession for the Owls. 42-41. Martin drives inside, and he's fouled by Hoffman. A 7-0 run for the Owls. They had a 7-0 run in the first half that closed the gap. A three from Hoffman. Those are the effort plays, Jake, that we've been seeing the past few days. The offensive rebounds, the crashing the glass, getting the extra points as Elijah Martin going to the line. I wish I had a supercomputer in front of me to tell you the last time the Temple Owls had seven points in a possession. I mean, almost impossible. It's just very special circumstances, but you know, the foul on the other end, Temple, you have given yourself such a chance to be in this game. Just gotta keep it going. Elijah Martin, his first points of the game at the line, the nearly 13 point per game scorer, knocks down both at the line to make it a three point game. 
44 to 41. FAU in front. Miller on the left wing. 16 sec 16 minutes left in the game. Miller drives. Miller inside off glass gets it to go. I see a Miller. Four of nine from the floor. He has 11 points. It's a one point game. Miller has quietly done very good in this game. He's been their leader all season long, even when he struggled. Greenlee to Davis. Davis is left wide open and gets the float off of Hoffman. Maybe a zone there for the yeah, Owls. Trying, but John L. Davis, hopefully that doesn't get him going. He has six. FAU must have a lot of experience against two or three zones because of Golden because Hoffman couldn't leave Golden. He's too big to leave. And then Davis just goes right at Hoffman. He's forced guarding two players. Settle, step back three in the face of Golden. He ties the game at 46. Steve Settle, a yell to the bench, 46 all. Martin, over to Greenlee. Greenlee on the left wing. Screen from Golden. Greenlee, Greenlee's trap. Greenlee trying to get rid of it, he gives it to Davis. Davis, step back on Piccarelli. Great guard from Piccarelli, 12 seconds on the shot clock. Davis, an offensive foul as he shoves Piccarelli to the ground. And Adam Fisher, a fist bump on the bench. And that's going to lead to a timeout on the floor. Jake, the Owls have stormed back to tie it. I mean, unbelievable stuff here from Temple. Absolutely everything so far in this half has gone Temple's way. Great stuff defensively, despite that early struggle with Golden. Golden hasn't had any points since then. And Temple, five of six from three in just five minutes insanity and one of those being a five-point play from Piccarelli. Temple is the hottest they have been in a single game stretch I think the entire season. Right now they're playing fantastic. They have to keep it up though because there's still 15 minutes of play to go but Temple they have the momentum. Yeah, we'll, we'll keep it right here as we're into the media timeout. 46 all. Temple has outscored FAU 21 to 13 in the second half to tie it. We saw a very similar thing with Charlotte where the outs blitzing the 49ers to start the second half, build a lead that they really didn't relinquish in that game. Well, guess what that lead was? It was 21 to 12 to start the second half last game against Charlotte nearly identical. The big difference though is that that took 11 minutes for Temple to get 21 points. They have done 21 points in 5 minutes. That's how electric that this pass blow has been. I mean Temple I, they've been so good in the second half. I don't know what halftime does for them. I don't know why they struggle so much in the first half. And if Adam Fisher knew, it wouldn't be happening. But they find a way once they come back out of the locker room. Well, we t well Adam Fisher talked about it last night. There was a question asked about halftime, specifically Jordan Wiley, who came alive last night against Charlotte. And he said the assistant coaches were coming up to guys saying, we need you. I imagine something to that degree was said at the locker room. Hey, guys, we need you. We're down eight, but there's still 15 minutes. 20 minutes left in the game. You gotta come alive. And there's been poise from Piccarelli, who really has had a, wait, we'll put it frank, a, a very quiet tournament. That, that's might be putting it nicely. Two threes, two free throws. He was a part of a seven point possession for the Owls. And he's out there on the floor in big minutes here. As breaking the timeout for the Owls is Heisier Miller, Matteo Piccarelli, John Leo White, Jordan Wiley, and Steve Settle. Owls have it after the John L. Davis turnover. Davis on the floor with Lorient, Greenlee, Boyd, along with Rosado. Hey, Temple, you gotta keep it going offensively. Get this lead here. I mean, when was the last time they had a lead? Six to five. Six to five earlier in this game. This would be huge. Gotta run some great offense right here. <laughs> 
Steve Settle and uh, Rosado there talking it over with the official at the midway line, but it looks to be at the moment press from FAU. We've seen it looks from... Looks to be. It's definitely Yeah, definitely a press. press. As a man on a man here, it's like some backyard football, man-on-man -man defense. Piccarelli trying to get it in. He gets it to Miller. Greenlee on the guard. Owls looking for their first lead since the beginning of the game. Miller left to right across the timeline. Settle to Riley. Riley at the top of the key. Guarded by Rosado on the switch. Riley to White. White over to Riley on the left wing. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Settle. Backs down Davis. And he lost it. Rosado gets it. And Davis going the other way for FAU. The lob is blocked by Riley, oh, but a goal 10. He hit it off the back of the rim, and now FAU back up to 48-46. I, I do think it's the right call. I know it goes against Temple, but it looked like that shot was about to come down. Jordan Riley, great effort. He couldn't have done anything else, but just a tad late. Miller quick, slowly left to right on the timeline. Gets a screen from White. Miller Directing traffic, Greenlee on him. Miller to Settle. Settle, Greenlee on him, the smaller guard. Pass to White. White drives. White denied at the rim by Laurient. Going the other way is FAU, and Davis will slow it down. Two straight blocks. Greenlee wide open for three. It rimmed out, and Wiley whips away the rebound. Temple in transition. Wiley is fouled by Greenlee, and Jordan Wiley will go to the line. What a swing, Jordan. Jake. Ooh, wild <laughs> basketball going on there. Great defense there from Lynette for earlier, but then Riley just ripping that one from the FAU squad. I mean, he just took it away. You know, there's jokes about him being an Avenger because of how strong he is. <laughs> and maybe he is. Maybe he used some super strength there to get him all the way to the rack for the free throws. And that was the third foul going to go against Brian Greenlee. And a tweet out from a former Al Kaleef battle on, tw on X, Twitter, whatever you want to call it. Would love to see my Owls get this stub. Well, he hasn't played for FAU, Jake, so I assume he's talking about Temple as Riley knocks down the first as Sam Hoffman into the game. Piccarelli taking a seat as well with Shane Dizzoni. Jordan Riley, 12 points so far in this one. Riley misses the second, tipped to Rosado and FAU holding a one-point lead. Just the second miss from the line today for Temple. Nick Boyd holding on. Gives it to Greenlee. Boyd again a little 2-3 zone for the Owls. Davis to Boyd. Boyd over to Greenlee. Greenlee on the right wing. Entry pass to Rosado. Rosado swings it out. Boyd wide open in the corner for three. No off the side of the rim. What a save by Wiley. Gets it to Dezoni on the wraparound pass. And Dezoni will slow it down and let his comrade come back in the offense. 13-20 left. Wiley drives. Wiley lays it up off glass as he got almost shoved green lead avoided the foul owls have a 49 48 lead over fau pass to greenlee on the right wing 13 minutes left in the game greenlee over to boyd boyd drives boyd fronted by hoffman he missed it no foul miller up ahead to white white inside and he missed the dunk oh, davis no. comes away with it Oh my god. And Laurent tumbling into the Temple cheerleaders as Davis will slow it down to allow Laurent to get back in the play. Boy, you gotta finish that. You can't be missing dunks. And Rosado gets fouled by the aforementioned White, and he will go to the line. Cha Leo White had one man to beat and couldn't throw it down to extend the lead. I mean, you, you gotta make that. You gotta at least get fouled when you're on a fast break like that. I mean, and then instantly going the other way for FAU and now two free throws for them. I know you have the one point lead, but you're still the underdog here. You gotta expect, you can't be shooting this well from the field the entire half. You gotta expect FAU to respond at some point. And you can't be making mistakes like this. Rosado missed the first from the line. Gaffney and Martin coming in for Davis and Greenlee. 
Interesting substitutions now for FAU taking out Davis. Yeah, Davis he made a great play after and the rebound after the white miss. Only six points for Davis, averaging 18 a game. The co-conference player of the year has been very quiet. Rosado makes the second to tie the game up at 49. Two outs, 249 scores apiece. 12.30 remaining in the game. Miller left to right, he gets a screen from Hoffman. The winner will play UAB tomorrow at 3.15 Eastern, 2.15 Central in the AAC Championship game. Miller to Riley. Riley back to Miller on the left wing. Nine on the shot clock. Miller wide open mid wing shot, he's got Hi, see him. Miller's on a heater. And the Owls up to 13 points for Miller. 51-49, Temple in front. Every time you think it's over and done with, they just pull you right back in, Jacob. Temple with the lead. Laurie at the floater. No rebound by White and a foul as Rosado hit the floor. Another foul on Temple. That'll be the fourth. And that'll be a foul that looks to be on White, who went for the rebound. Yeah, I, uh, you hear the flop chance again, but I do think that one was a legitimate foul. They, the te Temple's honestly gotten away with some physicality in this game. They've been very, very aggressive, especially in this second half on rebounds, on defense. is bound for it to happen. I think that was the right call, ultimately. I know the score bug's kind of frozen there, but Temple leads it 51-49 to with 11.56 left. Temple looking to advance to the final for the first time in, a in their AAC history. We'll be back after this. Welcome back to Fort Worth, Texas. Jacob Smedley, Jake Gable, 11.56 remaining in the ball game. The Temple Owls now leading the FAU Owls 51 to 49. Jake, how have they done it here in the second half? Three point shooting. The Owls have been just absolutely fortunate from downtown so far in this half. Five of seven from three point range. 10 point advantage in this half. Temple's done so good from beyond the arc. Black Golden started the half with three straight makes, but he hasn't taken a single shot 
since, you gotta wonder if FAU is gonna try to change that and get him the ball. Gaffney to Boyd. Boyd trying to get it to Golden inside and he's fouled. I see a middle looking for a type. That might be the only out solution so far to Golden who's missed a total of one shot. On the floor for the Owls, Steve Settle, Jordan Wiley, Shane DeZoni, Sam Hoffman, and Hysia Miller. That was Miller's second. Jaleel White with his fourth before the timeout as he's going to take a seat. Golden, one of one at the line already. The 66% free throw shooter on the season. Yeah, might, might be a hack of lad uh, mindset for Temple. North Texas did that a handful of times yesterday. And the FAU win over the Mean Green right here in the quarterfinals. 11.50 left. Golden looking to make it a one-point game. Golden does just that. He makes the second. Temple leads FAU 51 to 50. Tizoni inbounds to Miller. Miller slowly left to right across the timeline. Gaffney on the guard. Hoffman to Miller on the right wing. Hoffman comes up, sets a screen. Miller to Hoffman. Hoffman fakes a three, drives in, kicks to Settle in the corner. Settle, 10 seconds on the shot clock. Settle backs down Boyd. Settle inside. Settle shot no but a foul. Foul on Golden. The 6'10", Steve Settle will go to the line for two. That's the fourth foul on FAU. Both teams have four. Only the second foul on Golden, so he's still doing good in the foul trouble department. Nothing to worry about at the moment for him. Steve Settle, he's been inconsistent from the line so far. 64% free throw shooter on the season. He's missed a good amount of free throws this tournament. Let's see if he can change that. Settle missed the first. Jake, uh, there's been jinxes all around. I, I won't call you I think it's just saying and he's been struggling and he proved my point. <laughs> Weatherspoon in for Loyan who checks out. Steve Settle, the Owls a handful of players to the line late in the game. As you see, Adam Fisher, we mentioned it yesterday, hand on his knee as Settle splits a pair to put the Owls up to. Talked about it last night, Jake. You asked him about it. He's like, I'm just thinking about the next play. You're not supposed to see that. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, I can actually see the gears turning inside of his head as Settle makes the second. Boyd on the right wing. Owls a little zone again. Gaffney on the left wing. 14 on the shot clock. Gets it in the goal. Golden, Golden, draws a double for Miller. Pass out to Ga Martin. Pass to the corner, Boyd. Gets to Zoni in the air, pass to Gaffney. Two seconds left, Golden, no off the side of the rim. Rebound to Miller. Great team defense for Temple with the rotation. Great defense there. Golden only had about a second to get that one up before the shot clock expired. Rushed him and got the stop. Settle on Witherspoon, right in front of us on the near side of the floor. Miller on the left wing. Gets a screen from Hoffman. Miller drives. Miller kicks it to Settle for three in the corner. No. Dezoni couldn't grab the rebound, and it goes out of bounds. Owls claiming for a tip. They won't get it, and it will be FAU ball as Jonell Davis coming in for Boyd. I mean, I, you know, depending on your views on <laughs> the game of basketball and how it should be played, I saw Steve Settle kind of get hit on the hand as he shot. I would have sold that if I was Settle. Gaffney right to left as Adam Fisher pumping up the Temple faithful here in Fort Worth. Martin on the left wing gives it to Gaffney. Gaffney to Davis. Davis guarded by DeZoni. Davis back to Gaffney. 12 seconds on the shot clock. Gaffney. Gaffney. DeZoni on him. Pass to Martin. Martin the pull up Jay in the face of Settle. No. Rebound to Riley who will slow it down and let his guys move up the floor. 10 minutes left in the game. Temple leads FAU 52 to 50. Miller at the logo. Davis on him. Miller. Screen from Settle. Miller. Martin on him. Playing catch with Hoffman. 10 seconds on the shot clock. Miller with screen from Hoffman. Behind the back pass to Hoffman. Hoffman wide open for three. He's got it to go. The bank is open for Sam Hoffman, who puts the Temple Owls up five. 55-50. Hoffman actually called that play. He called for the horns formation and got <laughs> Steve Settle into his position. He was in the corner. He called for it. It eventually leads to him 
getting a wide open look for three and then making it off of some wild bounces. Heads up play by Hoffman as well as the shot. Hoffman, his second three. He does have three fouls as Settle fouled Gould in there. That's the fifth for Temple as a sideline out of bounds. Davis trying to get it in. Calls for Vlad who gets it to Hoffman and another foul on Sam Hoffman. Oh, no. That will be his fourth. Oh, geez, that is huge for Temple. I mean, 9.30 remaining, four fouls. You, you, can't, you can't keep Hoffman out there for that long. He's so crucial to your team. I mean, he can be as disciplined as he wants. It's just eventually a foul is going to come whether you like it or not just because of how the game's played. Emmanuel Akpomo comes in to spell Hoffman. Two owls now with four fouls. If I'm FAU, I go at Akpomo every time with Golden. Weatherspoon looking that way. Gives it to Greenlee. Greenlee off of a screen from Golden. Greenlee. Miller on the guard. Greenlee off the screen. Pass to the corner. Martin for three. No off the front of the rim. Miller the rebound. Elijah Martin is 0 for 4 from beyond the arc. If I'm the Owls, I'm doubling and forcing FAU to make shots. Yeah, Martin, a 36% three-point shooter. Normally, he's really struggled, and so is their leading scorer, John L. Davis. And Miller gets denied by Golden at the rim as Akpomo goes there to pick him up. Just so tough to finish over the 7-1 Vlad inside. Yeah, I... Vlad gave Miller a little stare down afterwards and Akpomo gave him a tiny shove. Nothing to warn any technicals or fouls or anything, but something to watch out for going forward. Miller to Riley. Riley. Bump on Martin. Turn around. Jumper at the free throw line and it rims out. Golden hits the floor. Rebound for FAU. Davis. Temple leads 55-50. 8.40 left. Weatherspoon steps into a three. It rims out. Rebound goes to settle. Owls have to capitalize. Dizzoni, Dizzoni steps through, Dizzoni inside, he got it to go off glass, Shane Dizzoni puts the Owls up 7, 57 to 50, Greenlee trying to slow it down, the final four team last year is on the ropes in the second half, as Miller, look at him right here, he's telling everyone to get back, you may be excited Temple Bench, but you gotta back up, you cannot encroach on the floor. Yeah, they were getting told yesterday that they were getting up too high. Obviously, this is exciting, but yeah, you do not want to get a technical foul with too many people getting up on the floor. But yeah, great poise by Miller there, who actually had the opposite effect last game. He got a technical, and he got talked to by Adam Fisher. He did get calmed down after that and play some clutch basketball afterwards, so... He's taking that. He is the leader of this team and making sure that they're still in check because <laughs> eight minutes, 21 seconds, the job is not done with even with a seven-point lead. Far from that, Jake, the, the Owls, the Temple Owls, that is eight minutes away from being one win away from March Madness and one win away from winning their first conference championship as a member of the American Conference that they joined back in the 2013-14 season when Louisville was in the conference. UConn, who's now one of the top-ranked teams in the country, was in the conference as well. Jake, how do the Owls close this out and continue the March Madness run. Play the way you've been playing this entire second half. 32 to 17 right now in the second half. That's that's domination, Jacob. That's domination. Who would have thought 6-0 run over the last three minutes? You're playing great. You're making your outside shots. You're playing great defense. Vlad hasn't done anything after his initial just you know, terrorizing start. But listen, FAU too good to just kneel over and give you this game. You have to be ready for any type of response because they were in this position against North Texas. I don't know if it was as big of a lead, but they were down around this same time against North Texas Mean Green and they used their experience that they gained from last year getting to the tournament. They used that 
and they played the smarter brand of basketball to end the game and ultimately end up with the win. Can they do it again, or can Temple somehow keep their magic alive? It's what everyone's asking, and it just comes down to these last eight minutes. You gotta give it your all. Well, Jake, I mean, while Golden has had his way with some of the Owls bigs, including forcing Sam Hoffman into foul trouble, the Temple Owls are taking taking on John L. Davis and Brandon Witherspoon and Elijah Martin and putting up numbers. Heisier Miller, 13 points. Jordan Riley with 14, including aggressive takes to the rim. They've been outplaying FAU's really all-American guards. Well, FAU, the the only player with more than one shot made the entire second half is Golden. I mean, that's absolutely incredible defense from Temple. You have to keep up the intensity. They've kept Davis in check the entire game. I mean, if the game plan is to let Golden do his thing and make sure Davis can't get going, it could work. But right now, they've been shutting down both of them. On the floor for the Owls, uh, uh, Temple that is, Miller, Riley, Settle, Akpomo, and Dazoni Weatherspoon up to Golden, and Golden is fouled again. Settle and Akpomo get Hoffman exited with four, and it looks to be against Akpomo. Regardless, two shots for Golden. If you're the Owls, again, you'll live with it. Make Golden earn the shots from the line. He's eight for 10 from the floor as it is. On the floor for FAU, John L. Davis. Greenlee along with Witherspoon. And Martin, Golden. Missed the first, it rolled out. Golden's now two of four from the line. I mean, yeah, if, if you have to do this, you have to do this. And I don't think Temple should shy away with, from it because this is how you stop his domination. As Golden splits a pair, makes it a six point game. Temple leads it 57 to 51. Little over eight minutes left. The winner of this Owls battle will face off against UAB tomorrow in the championship. Miller on the left wing, looking for a screen. He gets it from Seto, slides aside. 15 on the shot clock. Miller, another screen from Akpomo. Miller drives baseline. Miller up on Golden, he gets it over top of him and yells to the bench. Wow, what a move by Miller. Just using his finesse to get by the size of Golden. M Martin lost the handle of it and another foul as Akpomo hit the seat and the, Owl, the Temple Owls fouls starting to accumulate. Temple... Oh man, Temple can't keep fouling like this. They have too many. FAU already in the bonus and you've got nearly eight minutes to play in the entire second half. You're up eight. The defense has been great. It's been great intensity, but you got four fouls on White, four fouls on Hoffman who aren't even in the game. And then you got more coming in on other players. Akpomo, he gets the foul right there. You really have to watch out for this foul trouble because you know, it doesn't matter how well you've been playing if you foul out of the game. We're going to step aside. The Temple Owls lead at 59 to 51 as the Owls duke it out on half court. We'll be right back after this.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It's, it's the Temple Great Horned Owls taking on the Florida Atlantic Booing Owls. Yes, folks, uh, they're both owls, but different types of owls. Jake, Great Horned Stella, the Temple's live mascot, a Great Horned Owl, while the uh, Florida Atlantic Owls Booing Owls, the Great Horned Owls in control. Jake, they lead it 59 to 51 with under eight to play. Well, Temple hoping. <laughs> the burrowing owls, I guess, burrow into the ground for the remainder of this game. But right now, Martin finds himself at the foul line. Tem Temple is in foul trouble. They have eight already with that many minutes remaining in the second half. One and one for Elijah Martin, who has just two points on the game. He makes the first. Both of his points coming from the line. He's 0 of 5 from the floor. 0 of 4 from 3 he makes the first to make it a seven-point game. We mentioned it before the break. The owls, the, the fouls coming in bunches for the Temple Owls. Eight so far, including two players with four. Martin makes the second. He's perfect from the line. Four of four. It's a six-point game. 59-53 to Zoni to Miller. Full court press for FAU as Miller works it across the timeline. Boyd, Martin, Greenlee, Golden, and Davis for FAU. Miller, Akpomo, Dezoni, Wiley, and Settle for the Owls. Oh, and an offensive no. foul against Akpomo. And he wants to take a look at it. But regardless, it's going to be the second foul on Emmanuel Akpomo. The ninth for Temple with 7.26 left. This is exactly what you can't do if you're Temple. You can't foul. You cannot, especially on the offensive side of the basketball. Davis fouls a little zone again. Martin to Greenlee. Greenlee to Davis. John L. Davis taking Dezoni to the rack. Turn around, trying to get the shot over him, and it falls. John L. Davis can't be quiet too much longer. He now has eight points, three of seven, and FAU with four straight points. It's now a four-point game, 59 to 55. Temple in front, under seven minutes to go. Miller at the top of the key. Screen for Rock Pomo. Miller step back three. He's got it. I see him. Miller with a three down to his legs. Wow. Pass I mean, inside Miller. to Golden. It's knocked away from him. Seto comes up with it. A wild pass for FAU. Then Temple has it. Miller with a game high. Uh, a game high for the Owls. 18 points. Golden has 19. Miller. Martin on him. Akpomo trying to set him a screen, he can. Martin hounding the defense. 6.20 left, 10 on the shot clock. Miller, corner for Settle. Akpomo's Settle drives, lost it. Akpomo was open. Three seconds left on the shot clock as Fisher trying to plead his case. He's pointing to the top of the key. And right now, it looks like the coaches for Temple are calling a huddle. I, I don't know what's going on. They will, I think. Review it, I think. I think Fisher wanted something reviewed, but they called it Temple basketball, so I don't think. It, it, you're not going to call for the out of bounds to be reviewed if you're Fisher. And it looks to be Sam Hoffman who's nestled into the huddle. Would be interesting to see him come back into the game playing with four fouls. Six minutes left, Jake, as Temple High Seer Miller. He said it here in Texas. My best game is the next game. He had 21 points a few nights ago against SMU. Struggled against Charlotte, but tonight, red hot, willing his team in front. He has been locked in. I mean, he has a Temple tournament record twice, 21 points. It's the most anyone's ever had in AAC conference tournament play. And he's only three points away from it. And High Seer Miller with two steals in this one now becomes the AAC sole possession leader in steals for a conference tournament with 11. Is tied for the most in three games. Miller trying to inbound over Golden. The 7-1 big man defends him. Four seconds. Wiley's got to get a shot off. He's it at the buzzer. No, he doesn't get it off again. That's the second time in two nights. Wiley has not noticed the clock. He got 
gotta know that, especially coming out of a review. You know what the time is. You're not even playing. It's not like the clock was dwindling. It's sat at that same spot the entire time. You have to be more aware. Boyd lets it roll all the way to the midway line. No Temple out picks him up. Six minutes left. Temple leads FAU 62-55. Davis drives. Davis into the paint and a left-handed layup. Hoffman with his four fouls did not contest. He's back. John L. Davis finally making his mark felt. He's up to 10 points right now. Five-point lead for Temple. You have to find a way to stop him and not let him get hot. Miller off the screen from Hoffman in the face of Golden. No, he missed everything. Rebound Boyd up ahead to Davis. Davis trying to get it to Brighton. Miller steals it. And Miller's going to back it out after the steal. His third of the game. What a clutch steal by Miller. Just extending his entire body out for that one. And just glue for hands catching it. Riley off of a screen for Hoffman, slowing it down. A little over five minutes to play. Dezoni, Hoffman, faking three, drives in, kicks it to Riley. Riley drives, floater off a of golden, no rebound to Boyd. Five minutes left, Temple leads at 62-57. Boyd drives, Boyd into the paint. Boyd lost the handle, he lost the ball. Miller has it in transition. Settle ahead, and Settle lays it up for two. Temple leads by seven, under five minutes left. Ooh, Greenly across the timeline, he's going to slow it down. Going to be a great finish, Jacob, regardless of what happens. Temple playing so locked in right now. Davis off the catch, knocks it down. He finds his spot in the zone, and John L. Davis, his first made three of the game, makes it a four-point game. As the great Mark Zumoff says, Jake, we're coming in for a landing. Four minutes left. 64 to 60, Temple in front. Hoffman to Miller. Miller gets a screen. Miller back to Hoffman. Hoffman for three. No off the front of the rim. Boyd the rebound. Hoffman, it looked like he fouled him. He did not. Boyd traveled and he... It looked like he traveled. He did not. They're saying he never had possession when he caught it, so he couldn't have traveled. Golden takes Hoffman to the rack and lays up two. It's a two-point game. Timeout, Adam Fisher. And the game that was an eight-point lead for Temple is down to just two. It's because John L. Davis finally decides to enter the building. He barely had an impact in the first half. A very quiet four points. He's the co-conference player of the year. He's finally showing up for FAU. He's got nine points in the half and they've all come very recently in very clutch moments. Temple, you have to find a way to stop him. White hasn't been on the floor recently because he's also got four fouls just like Hoffman. I think you need to put him back into the game. Put him on Davis. If you foul, you foul. I mean, same thing with Hoffman on Golden right now because Hoffman was the nearest defender for that golden layup and if you foul, you foul I mean, I don't know what you do because obviously you don't want to lose the production that Sam Hoffman gives you it's so important, it's so crucial but you have to trust your bench and you have to play with your all because if you're just going to give up layups in a two point game it, they're going to eventually catch up and the same thing with White I think you play your best players, your best defenders to take away their best offensive players and you have to live with the consequences yeah you're right Jake, there's under four minutes left, we'll keep it here, a media timeout on the floor a f uh, FAU has scored fa four of their last four from the field, Temple still out scoring FAU 39 to 29 in the second half they hold a two point advantage with 352 left again the winner goes to the AAC final game tomorrow afternoon here at Dickey's Arena against the UAB Blazers who defeated the South Florida Bulls the number one seed went down Temple looking to take out the number two seed in the same day and right now a dance battle going on between the two owls at center court. 
But right now, Jake, you mentioned the defensive side for the Owls. Got to keep letting High Sierra Miller take his shots and get to his spots. Yes, yes, definitely. High Sierra Miller has been the catalyst all game long. 18 points, 50% from both behind the arc and just the field in general. He's also gotten some clutch steals as well. Jordan Riley's played well in this game. He had a couple of lapses recently. He needs to focus back in and make sure he's driving aggressively to the rack. Settle has been important. Hoffman has been important. I'd like to see some things out of Shane Dezoni as well. He's given sport spurts today where he's driven to the rack and has gotten offense going for Temple. I mean, we mentioned it. FAU was great in this same moment against North Texas. They were trailing, they came back, they used their poise and experience to lead them to that victory yesterday. FAU now four of their last four on field goals. You feel like it's deja vu, Temple. You have to do something different. You can't let the moment rattle you. You haven't so far. You've been the underdog in two of your three wins. You're playing your fourth game in four days. You have to find whatever strength you have inside to pull this one off. Temple has it out of the timeout. Dezoni, Riley, Settle, Miller, and Hoffman on the floor for Temple. For FAU, it's their starters. Minus Weatherspoon on the floor is Martin, Boyd, Greenlee, Davis, and Golden. Inbound Dezoni, full court press. He gets it in to Settle, who hands it back to Dezoni. Under four minutes left in the ball game. Hoffman gives Miller a screen moving left to right. Miller calling for some motion. He's at the logo. Gives it to Dezoni, who gives it off to Riley. M Miller, Miller, Golden on the help. Hoffman, back to Miller. Miller on Greenlee. Seven seconds on the shot clock. Owls have to get busy. Miller, three, bank, no, rebound to Golden. And Miller telling his guys to get back. FAU can tie, go ahead with a three. This is not a smart shot. I mean, the cl clock was dwindling. You have to get your offense going faster. Greenlee, Owls playing again, a bit of a zone. Pass to Boyd in the corner. Boyd, screen from Golden. Davis, Davis drives on Dezoni. Left hand layup is good, and this game is tied. John L. Davis has woken up. He now has 15, and this game is tied at 64. He looks like a totally different player. He looks like the best player in the conference, like he's built to be. Temple, you gotta get a body on him. You can foul Davis, make his life harder. Riley to Dezoni, 10 seconds on the shot clock. Dezoni trying to create. Dezoni pull up Jay and nails it in the face of Golden Temple. Back up to 66-64. Gotta stop the bleeding on Davis. Davis steps into a three. No rebound to Riley. Not a good shot if you're Davis, who's been succeeding, get into the rack. Yeah, the heat check there from Davis. I mean, it would have been a huge momentum swing, but too early in the shot clock for my liking, but it works out for Temple. Two minutes left in the game. Miller off of a screen from Hoffman. Miller to settle. Dezoni's wide open right in front of us. Riley doesn't see it. Riley drives, blocking foul. Riley will go to the line. The foul is on Martin. That's his first. That's the fifth foul for FAU. Still a few away from a bonus situation. Free throws, Jacob. Free throws, so important. Temple's done a decent job today. 7 of 10. 70%. You can't complain too much there, but Riley has struggled in this postseason at the line. He missed two in a row late last night. It didn't affect the outcome, but right now you have to Expect this to be critical. Wiley knocks down the first, makes it a three-point game. Shane Dezoni was right in front of us. He looked like he was wide open for a while on the FAU breakdown. Wiley didn't see it, said, I'm going to call my own number. He gets to the line and makes the first. Wiley 
knocks down the second, two for two, puts Temple up four. Under two minutes left, Boyd's gonna roll it, Temple picks him up. Dizzoni on the guard for Davis, hands it off to Weatherspoon. Boyd trying to get it to Golden, he throws it high, Golden comes down with it, using all of that wingspan. Golden inside on Hoffman and he gets it to go. Not much you can do about that. Wow, I mean, you thought the pass was way too high for Golden, he somehow comes down with it. And then good defense by Hoffman, and he just, Golden, this is what he did against North Texas. He's up to 23 points. Miller around a Hoffman screen, gets it to him. Rotation for FAU, Miller for three, he's got it! I see him, Miller puts Temple up by five, over a minute left. Davis drives, Davis pass, and it's blocked but a foul. Golden will go to the line. Good, I mean, good foul as maybe you can, putting him at the line. But hi, Sam Miller, the Philadelphia native, Jake. Five for 10 from three. He's got 21 points. Isaiah Miller has been arguably the MVP of the entire tournament. He has done so well. I know he's been a little bit inconsistent with struggles against Charlotte yesterday. Golden missed the first. So crucial. Five point lead for Temple. Into the game is Lurie and for Greenlee for probably some size. Hi, Sia Miller taking over the game. Big time players making big time plays. Vlad Golden at the line for his second. Temple leads it by five. And they will at the moment continue to lead it by five. Golden missed both. Temple the other way left to right, a minute left. Jake, unbelievable. Jake. Miller at the logo against Davis. Miller, the trap comes. Golden, it looks like he fouled him. Riley's holding on. Smart choice, though 10 seconds on the shot clock. Eight, Riley's got to get busy. Riley drives on Boyd, and he fouls him, and Boyd can't believe it as he runs over towards us. It is the sixth foul, so that won't be free throws, but it resets the shot clock to 20. That's huge. There's only 50 seconds left in the game. And right now, Dusty May squad, you got a foul. You've got a foul down five. I mean, there's still 50 seconds left, but Temple can work this down to 20 seconds, 30 seconds left. Miller to Settle. Settle drives on Davis. Settle, no, but he's fouled again. That's now the seventh on FAU. Settle hits the floor, and he will go to the line for two. Steve Settle has the potential to put this game away, Jake. Gotta hit these free throws. I mean, even if he hits them, it isn't away. I know it's a five-point game, but FAU... Still plenty of time, if though. If there's a team that could do it, it'd be them. Settle, huge free throws right now. Steve Settle. The transfer from Howard. Settle knocks it down. Steve Settle knocks down the first, makes it a six-point game, Jake. We talked about it a few days ago on the broadcast. Steve Settle, the transfer from Howard. Howard, who just won the MEAC hours ago against Delaware State. Settle, really one of the only guys on this roster that has that postseason experience, has been huge today and the rest of the games. Settle missed the second. Gold in the rebound. Six point game, 40 seconds left. Greenlee ahead to Boyd. Boyd drives on Riley. Boyd, he's got to work quick. Quickly, he's taking too much time. Riley blocks it away, and a goal tend again. Riley thought he caught it at the summit. He did not. It is a goal tend. Riley can't believe it, but Temple still leads by four with 36 seconds left. How many goal tends has Jordan <laughs> Riley had? It's not his fault. I'm not blaming yeah. him. But geez, he's been so close to getting so many clutch blocks. The officials might be reviewing the goaltend, however. They are at the scorer's table. This could be huge. For those listening at home, it has to, if, it, if it's at the top of its apex, it is considered a block. If it is on its way down, it is a goaltend. They are reviewing it. Riley using all of his vertical to try and swat it away. Regardless points or not, Temple still has the lead, whether by four or by six, Jake. There is a six-second difference right now on the shot clock, 
FAU has got to think about fouling because it's going to be two possessions regardless of the total. If I'm FAU, though, I'm shocked they haven't done it before. They need to press first. I think you are you can give yourself 10 seconds if you're FAU. Give it all you have to try to get a steal in the backcourt. Try to force a 10 second violation before fouling. Because Temple did struggle with that a little bit with SMU. They've done better as they've gone further in the tournament. And Charlotte, they had no problems at all. But they Charlotte didn't blitz them like SMU did. If I'm FAU, I'm getting everything I've got at them. So the call was confirmed. The made bucket good for Boyd on the goaltend. 36 seconds left. Temple leads FAU 72 to 68. Dezoni to inbound. The press is here for FAU. Loyant Greenlee along with Martin Davis and Boyd Golden off the floor for the Owls. Miller, Settle, Hoffman, and Dezoni. Dezoni to Miller. Miller draws a crowd. Miller a blocking foul and we're gonna walk the floor. That's who you want at the foul line if you're Temple. I mean, it was an awkward play. I think it was the right call, but Miller was trying to drive <laughs> baseline under his own basket and bumps into the FAU player. And, man, that, that could have been an offensive foul. I, I don't think it was, but it was a close play. Got to be careful, Gold. but it works out in Temple's favor. Golden in for Lorian. High Sierra Miller at the line. Only two seconds came off the game clock. 34 and a half left. 72 to 68. High Sierra Miller at the line for the one and one. Missed it. Rebound to Davis. Four point game. Davis. Davis. Sidestep three. Draws a foul. And Joe now Davis is going to go to the charity stripe for three. The swing right there. Oh my goodness. If he makes all three of these free throws, what a move by Davis. But Miller missing the first free throw. If he makes both, that's a six point game now. You're talking about taking both those potential points off the board and giving FAU three to make it a one point game. Worst case scenario if you're Temple. Joe now Davis makes the first 16 points, three of three from the line, 72-69. Temple has 10 fouls. They've been in the double bonus since seven minutes left. Eight fouls on FAU. Davis gets the second. It's a two-point game. Hoffman comes in. Lorient comes in along with Witherspoon. Temple trying to hold on. Davis has one more at the line, can make it a one-point game. Two timeouts for either side. Davis gets the ball in his left. The deep breath with FAU in front of him. And he makes all three to make it a one-point game. Shot clock is off. Temple, Temple has I'm calling a timeout. Temple has two timeouts. Seto gets it on the inbound. Trapped. And a jump ball. And it will be... Who will have it? Temple, Temple will have it. But now the possession arrow switches as FAU oh, nearly out. stole it away, and that's what Adam Fisher is going to do. This shouldn't have even been an inbound. Who knows, maybe it's absolutely meaningless, but you should not have even inbounded that ball. Are you kidding me? When you have a momentum swing like that, FAU now has the momentum down one after three made free throws. You gotta talk over your inbound play. You know FAU has to foul. The shot clock's been unplugged. If you're Temple, you have to have the best play you could possibly have going into that. If you don't talk it over, I mean, you're lucky that it was a jump ball. Who knows if it gets ripped out? We could be talking about a Temple team losing right now. Gotta lock in right now. Coach Fisher, you gotta call the best play you've called of your entire head coaching's career. It's only been one year, but you know FAU is gonna give you everything they've got 
They stopped you right there for a jump ball. You can't let it happen again. And you have to get your best free throw shooters the ball as well. I know Miller just missed, but he's probably your best bet. Settle, I don't know if you want him in that position, even if he got fouled instead of the jump ball, because you make both as a three-point game, but they can still tie. You miss one, they could even take the lead and still tie. Temple leads it 72 to 71. They led this game by five moments ago. Now it's down to one. Settle, Hoffman, Dezoni, Wiley, and Miller on the floor for the final 27 seconds. Temple trying to pull off the upset. They're now in murky waters as Davis made all three at the line. He has 18 points. No one else in double figures for FAU outside of Davis and Golden. Davis is on the floor with Greenlee, Laureate, who's at the inbound, Weatherspoon, and Martin. 27 seconds, Dizoni to inbound, Dizoni trying to get it in, Dizoni gets it into Miller, 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 he's got to get it out, he's got to get it out, Miller walking the baseline, up ahead to Dizoni, Dizoni to Hoffman, Hoffman in the front court, gives it to Dizoni, Dizoni holding on, and now FAU fouls with 14 seconds left. I mentioned earlier, Jacob, that I think you go for the steal if you're FAU, I think they played that correctly from an FAU perspective and Temple played it correctly obviously from a Temple perspective getting past half court the zoning at the line and you drain about 10 seconds of clock this is really good for you you just need to hit the free throws Jake I'm, so I'm pulling an Adam Fisher I'm down on a knee I, I don't know if I can look I don't know if I to, can look, you Jake. You want me to do the play-by-play <laughs> play for the free throw? Uh, no, I'm thinking about the, what's going to happen next, Jake. I'm thinking about what's going to happen next. Shane Dezoni at the line. Shane Dezoni gets the first to roll. Oh, my goodness, Jake. That looked like it was going out. It went in. Temple up two. White comes into the game. Maybe if you're up three, do you foul? Is that a question? Is that something that's on the table, Jake? Late enough in the clock. Late enough in the clock, yes. But John L. Davis got fouled early on a three-point attempt. Dezoni makes both. Temple up three. Boyd trying to get it into Davis. Owls Temple on the press. Davis will inbound. John L. Davis to Boyd. 13 seconds. Boyd into the front court. Boyd tries. Boyd is fouled by Steve Settle with 10 seconds left on the game clock. That is Settle's third. And to the line for two is Nick Boyd, who only has four points on the game, two of five from the floor. This is his first trip to the stripe. FAU shooting 16 for 22 from the line, 73%, not much better than Temple. I mean, while the foul isn't ideal, it's better than giving a wide open layup in less than four seconds. You're Boyd. Temple, now you're on the opposite side of wanting them to miss. Boyd makes the first, makes it a two point game. Hoffman in for White as Weatherspoon sits at the scores table, ready to check in for the shot. Riley, Hoffman, Dezoni, Miller on, and Settle on the floor for Temple, looking to hold on. Boyd. Boyd makes the second. It's a one-point game and a timeout called by FAU, or no, substitution, excuse me. Ten seconds left. Temple has a timeout if they need to use it. You don't even have to cross half court. Exactly 10 seconds left. You just have to hold the ball. Dezoni set to inbound. Dezoni. Dezoni gets it in the Hoffman. Hoffman to Dezoni. Dezoni is fouled with seven seconds. And Shane Dezoni will walk the floor again. I like the decision because Dezoni just hit two clutch free throws. I like getting it back to him. You also waste not too much time, but you don't want to be dangerous. You'll take the two seconds, 2.4 seconds that you took off the clock. I think it's a good scenario for Temple to be in again. Free throws. It's been so important. Temple's done a good job. They need to keep it up. Shane Dezoni, so important. Dezoni misses the first. All he can do is make it a two point game. White in for Hoffman. The guard 
from Pocono Mountains, transferred to Temple two years ago from Vanderbilt. Last year, limited minutes under Aaron McKee in a full rotation. This year, he's gotten an opportunity off the bench. And here, looking to put Temple up to Dizoni. Misses the second. It's a one-point game. John L. Davis, four seconds, three. Davis hands it off. Ball loose. Temple has it. And Temple wins. And Temple wins. And Temple is going to the finals. And Temple has taken down FAU and will go to the finals. Jake, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Temple, oh my goodness. FAU, you have two timeouts. Two timeouts and you don't take it. I can't believe the decision. I can't believe John L. Davis doesn't take the last shot. He passes it off. Unbelievable. Oh, miracle, magic, whatever you want to call it. Temple has won four games in four days. They are in the final of the conference tournament. After being in the first four, they lost ten games straight earlier in the season. They're in the middle of a betting investigation. <laughs> they haven't even won a single conference tournament game since 2018. And now they've done four of them. And they find themselves with their first opportunity ever to win the AAC tournament. I wow. see a Miller slaps it on the board, and it'll be a rematch to the final game of the regular season. The Temple Owls against the UAB Blazers for the American Athletic Conference Championship. The Temple Owls for the first time in its history as a part of the American will be going to the championship, and the Owls are one win away from March Madness. It is March. It is madness. No other way to describe it. It's perfect. March Madness absolutely at its finest. Temple one win away. And we talked about it, Jacob. Who's on the other side? UAB. If you don't know the significance to that, UAB Blazers beat Temple just before the season ended and that was the game that got a watchdog company a betting investigation onto the Temple Owls and now the two meet in the finals you can't write a better story Jacob you cannot Jake and right now Adam Fisher being interviewed with the ESPN crew, the Temple Owls, take down a team that went to the Final Four last year, ladies and gentlemen. FAU went into March Madness and won four games. What Temple was trying to do to get to that point, FAU did it, and Temple, once again, finds a way to win a game in the second half. They outscored FAU 49 to 40 as Jordan Riley getting interviewed right in front of us and he's gonna go over and stare down his teammate High Seer Miller who's getting interviewed at center court. Final score from Fort Worth. The Temple Owls are going to the finals. They take down FAU 74 to 73. It's Temple. It's UAB tomorrow in the finals. Thank you all for listening. And the Owls win it.